All right. Hello and welcome to NOAA News. Today is Friday, August 10th, and I'm your host, Krista McDonald. On Tuesday night, the Zoning Board of Appeals made their decision on the long-disputed Astor Avenue application for a medical marijuana dispensary. Like in previous meetings, the board went back and forth on interpretations of the bylaws definition of an educational facility. Ultimately, a motion was made to approve the application. Um, does anybody want to be heard on it anything further, or do you want to make a motion? Anybody? Well, I would make a motion that oh. we approve the application with, this, with the condition that it's reviewed in one year. And I will second that. Motion made by Mr. Easy, seconded by Mr. Perry to approve the application, Ramonda, with the review uh, with the applicants and the police uh, department um, in one year from the date of the opening of the doors, the first day of business. That's fair, right? Yeah, that's absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, on that motion, do I hear those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 All those in opposed? No. The motion prevails four to one. The project will now be taken in front of the selectmen for a final approval. You may have noticed some work going on at the Nord Central train station this month. The MBTA has begun the initial stages of their solar infrastructure project. Resident Samantha Baturin commutes from Nord Central daily. I first noticed the construction project uh, about a week after I started commuting, so middle of July. And at first it was just a big fence, so I didn't know what it was, but um, I don't think anyone else did at first, so the way it impacted me because there was just cars everywhere. When no one knew what the project was, they were just parking literally anywhere they could find a spot, and it made getting out of here really difficult, and there was lots of traffic. And I think they were worried that there wouldn't be enough room because they didn't, they hadn't dealt with this giant fence blocking off all the spots at first. And then people were just driving like crazy to get out of the parking lot and beat the rush uh, with the satellites by the hospital. But I think over time people have started to figure it out and maybe going to other stations because it's gotten better the past few weeks. I support the solar panels. I think that's good for the environment. I think it's good that they're doing it, um, but maybe they just could have started it in a better way. According to the Mass DOT blog, the 20-year lease agreement with Omni Navitas Holdings LLC will generate $1.9 million in base rent in the first year, with a 3% annual increase. When asked for comment, press liaison for the MBTA, Lisa Battiston, said solar panel construction work, including the installation of solar panel canopies, began on July 16th at Nord Central Station. Completion of solar panel canopies at Nord Central is anticipated by October 2018. Stay tuned after this break to learn how your town officials are working on their team building and how to find the newest place to grab a bite to eat. Stop by the Norwood Morrill Memorial Library and check out magazines, newspapers, DVDs, and of course, books. The library also offers a variety of services, including passport renewal, a notary, and tutoring, with multiple different meeting rooms which can be booked for your convenience. Take advantage of online digital resources and get assistance with all of your research needs. Kids can enjoy the children's room stocked with books and toys. There are also a variety of programs for children and adults. And if you can't make it into the library, the library can come to you with home delivery. The library is open Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and on Fridays from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. To learn more, go to www.norwoodlibrary.org. Welcome back. Last week, Town Manager Tony Mazzucco and all the town's department heads held an off-site retreat at Bridgewater State College. It was a full day of training for all those who attended. We stopped by Tony's office to learn more. So last Friday we had our first management retreat off-site here in Norwood and uh, it was a gathering of all the town department heads. We met off-site. We chose Bridgewater State University as a uh, off-site location so that we could really get that full retreat feel uh, and going off-site. And we had a full day of some training and some sharing of information. It was overall, I think, a very good day. Some of the topics we included defining public service and what that means to us. We talked about leadership. We talked about how we go from good to great. And we're actually, as a team, reading Good to Great by uh, Jim Collins, the author Jim Collins, not the uh, Light Department Jim Collins. Um, as a team, we're reading that book so that we can look at how we can take, what, uh, take ourselves from going from good to great. 
we had some of the departments in town present on some of their updates and some operations that they have going on. We had the health department talk about uh, Impact Norwood and what they have going on. Carrie McCarthy talked to us about uh, some of the Alzheimer and dementia friendly training programs that they're doing and what's going on in the state and how we're going to try to bring that training to all town staff uh, so that we can be dementia friendly training. We also did a session on diversity and inclusion. So we hired an outside facilitator to come in and do about a two hour training on some diversity and inclusion topics. So I think everyone knows the community is uh, both gentrifying and diversifying at a pretty rapid rate. So we wanted to make sure that department heads were able to have some really uh, top level training in that and have a good discussion around that. And uh, we also talked about how we are structured and where we want to go and sort of defining a vision for different departments and having a discussion on that. So overall it was a good day, it was a good management tool. We've traditionally every year done some sort of a training session with department heads where it's focused on leadership or management. And uh, this year was a little bit different in that we took the whole day to do it. We tried to do it as an offsite so everyone could sort of take that step back and really evaluate where we're going and what we're doing as a management team. I spoke a little bit more at this one than we normally would. I talked a little bit about my inspiration for public service and where that came from so that I could formally sort of share that with all my department heads. But it's rare that us as a department head team get to come together and do some training as a group, as a whole, and to do some training together and be able to relate the training to what we're all actually doing. So it was a great opportunity. It was a great day. Uh, we had a great opportunity at the department head retreat to um, not only get some really informative training about diversity, inclusion, and equity, but also to have discussions and share ideas as a group. Um, it was a, a good opportunity for all of us to sit down away from all the distractions of our everyday work and, um, and discuss really the direction of the town and directions of our departments and how we see the future and how we can work together to, to really better the community. Um, the diversity training was a great um, stepping stone to a lot of our discussions. It really talked about um, in public service, how can we be more inclusive and how can we draw in people from the community and be um, a, a place where everybody can have an opportunity to the same level of service. Um, and understanding that different people need to be treated differently and everybody has different needs and I think as public servants it's important to know that and understand that and realize that you can't just treat everybody the same because everybody has different needs and that we need to work harder to make sure our services are provided to everybody in the community. Thanks Tony and Seagal. It is great to see all the department heads working together. We are happy to announce that we are premiering a new segment on NOAA News this week. Living Local will be a recurring segment that highlights different local businesses around town. You will learn where to eat local, shop local, exercise local, and even get tips on how to fix it local. This week, NOAA News reporter Mike Maloof traveled down to the Winsmith Markets to eat local with Old Mill Grill. Let's take a look at this week's Living Local. Thanks, Kristen. I'm down here at the Winsmith Markets in front of the Old Mill Grill Mobile Cafe with owner, chef, manager, Zach Kimmon. Thank you for coming on. No problem, thank you. So I guess the first question would be, why food truck? Um, well, honestly, I first of all, I was just looking for a summer job, that kind of thing, and didn't know. I mean, I had had restaurant experience, and I know that the people who are around here have wanted food here for quite some time. And so it just sort of all came together because they already had some truck stuff available. And I mean, my mom, she wrote a cookbook. She's had so many recipes for so long that we've always been making and everything. So I guess the stars just kind of aligned and it just worked out. And when did you get this started up and running? Um, our first day was June 9th. So it was early June. We tried to get a little earlier, but I mean, there's just so many things you have to do to set it up. It's a lot of work more than they expected. I mean, a lot for a summer job, so right. yeah, early June, that was when we finally got started. So you started in June, you've been going throughout the summer, how's the business been so far? Um, it goes pretty well, I mean, there's some days that are better, some that aren't as good, I mean, because they're only open on the weekends here at the shops, and so that brings right. in a lot of crowds, but I mean, we're able to get people who shop here, people who are the shop owners, I mean, my friends come, people who live near, people who are coming from wherever they heard us on Norwood Now or something, so there's a wide range of people, so it makes for pretty good business. Awesome, and now what everyone wants to know, we can get into the menu, tell us some of the things that you're cooking down here. So some things we have, grilled cheese is my personal favorite thing, the buffalo chicken grilled cheese. That seems to be a favorite among people around my age, yep. and because I mean, I just put buffalo chicken <laughs> on everything, so it works. And then we have cheese steaks, we have a Mediterranean chopped salad okay. on a bed of roasted red pepper hummus. That's one of my mom's favorite yeah, recipes. Yeah, that sounds and, awesome. Yeah, people just love that. And then we have cold brew iced coffee. We'll have different pastries every day, um, hot dogs. We have some specials like chowder we had the other day or okay. tuna salad, chicken salad. So 
We tried to do a wide range of things to try to please everybody around here. Yeah, I read some of the reviews on Facebook. I saw that the grilled cheeses were to die for. That's good to hear. I mean, those are the reviews we like to have back. So. Right. Yeah. And um, speaking of Facebook, you post a lot on the specials that you have and stuff like yeah. that. Is that a good way for people to find out what they can get on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, that seems like the best way, yeah, because I mean, if we're posting on Facebook, I mean, we can reach up to three, 4,000 people sometimes. And I mean, right. we're on Instagram too, not as active there, but I mean, just because the Facebook crowds seem to be a bit bigger, but I mean, yeah, that social media seems to be our best way of branching out to the customers. Give yourself a plug. What's what's the Facebook page? Uh, Facebook page, um, just Old Mill Grill, grill with an E on the end. Okay. And then Instagram, the same name, Old Mill Grill, no spaces or anything. Awesome. And what are the hours that you're open? Because you mentioned you're open on the weekends. Um, yeah, so we're open Friday through Sunday. That's going to be the hours. And Friday and Saturday, it's 11 to 4, and then Sunday is 12 to 5. Awesome. Um, is there anything else that you'd want to tell the customers in Nord? Um, nothing specifically. Just hope everybody comes on down because we'd love to see them here. And I mean, it's a nice area and there's so many awesome shops to check out while you're here too. So I mean, we'd appreciate your business and I'm sure everybody else would. There's a nice place to go eat with your family or kids or whoever with the tables out back. And so we just love to see everybody. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. I recommend everyone come down here and try out the Old Mill Grill. That's all for Living Local. Now back to the desk. Great job, Zach. Stay tuned after this break to find out everything that's happening in our town government. Hi, I'm Tom O'Rourke. I'm the president of the Neponset Valley Chamber of Commerce located here in Norwood. We are a business organization of about 500 local businesses, and we believe that business can accomplish a lot more together than they can on their own. So we encourage local businesses to join us and let their voice be heard as part of the Chamber of Commerce. Our mission is to connect. We connect business to business, we connect business to the community, and we connect business to the local school systems. We work very closely with the local school systems to ensure that we're, our future workforce is the best it can be, and that people who live in this area can work in this area and make a, a great life for themselves in the Neponset Valley region. So we encourage you to become a part of the Chamber. If you're not today, you can learn more about us on our website, nvcc.com, or you can always call the office at 781-769-1126. We look forward to seeing you in the Neponset Valley. Welcome back to NOAA News. The Budget Balancing Committee met on Monday evening. Superintendent Dr. Thompson and member Maya Bodenhofer discussed the long-term priorities of the school system, including mass core curriculum, experiential learning, student intervention programming, social-emotional education, and AP classes. Dr. Thompson emphasized how important hands-on experiential learning will be for students in today's economy. And this is something that we have started doing. We've started laying the groundwork. Uh, we've joined uh, a, a uh, cohort with our tech um, our tech districts around us looking at uh, personalized learning and hands-on um, project-based learning. But this is, we want to do a couple things. One is we want to increase the engagement of our students and make more real-life learning experiences. Uh, we also want to start looking at creating career pathways. Not every student going to our high school is going on to college. Uh, so what kind of career pathways are we, are we facilitating for them? Is there something they could move into, maybe into a medical documentation field, maybe bookkeeping, something along that line, uh, a medical assistant sort of thing. So some of these other pathways to at least give students who are coming out of high school a chance to start on a career while they determine where they want to go from there. And this is not an end pathway, but a start. Mm -hmm. So you might have a student come out, you know, maybe is interested in medical records, mm -hmm. and that you know, transmits into another career opportunity and they advance beyond that. But the problem is if you don't have these opportunities coming out, you're not really facilitating them really being career ready when they come out of high school. How, how when asked how this would be different than programs technical schools like Blue Hills provide, Dr. Thompson said there would be more options and they would not necessarily be certificate programs. Members then discussed what is required to meet level services and decided to defer to refine projected budgets for the next meeting. Chair Alan Slater brought up the amount of taxes Norwood levies. One of the questions which I know a lot of people have always brought up is because of you know, our low tax rate is, you know, are we actually taxing as much as we are? I mean, are we leaving money on the table arbitrarily and artificially trying to have a low tax rate? And what this shows on the 
excess unused levy is that Norwood basically taxes to the maximum amount that it could on the Proposition 2 and a half. We only leave a little more than $5,000 on the table, and the re reason we leave even that amount on the table is when you set your tax rate, and Mr. McQuaid can confirm this, is that when you set your tax rate, it has to be in whole numbers, it can't be in fractions. Mm -hmm. And it, that, that number is also, the state actually somewhat determines that number. When we yeah. submit our tax recap, yeah. they will go in and make adjustments. So yeah. for a budget or a tax base our size, $5,000 is effectively zero. We pretty much spend down to the zero, and then as you get close yeah. to setting the tax right. recap, some things go up and down, but it has to be a positive yeah. number. But that, that's effectively zero. The Budget Balancing Committee will meet again on August 27th. The selectmen met in their chambers on Tuesday night, and first on the agenda were the lifeguards who saved a young woman's life at Father Max Pool last week. The young woman had suffered a seizure while in the pool, and the lifeguards rushed in to save the day. It was those two or three minutes where we all knew what to do, yeah. and that's all thanks to Catherine, because we would not have known what to do without really good training. Every Monday we trained, so it's, it's really those times where it's like it gets down to it, what to do, um, who calls 911, who gets it back for it. So it was really important, and everyone on that staff on that day really, really helped out a lot. So. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> Thank you very much. The guards credit their aquatic director, Catherine Lee, for making sure they are prepared to handle these situations if they arise. Yeah, most of our lifeguards are um, either present or past members of um, the Nord High School school system. Um, so I think that that's definitely bragging rights for the community of Norwood. And I mean, we just wanted to thank the Board of Selectmen, the Recreation Department, and the community as a whole because it makes our job 10 times easier having everyone's support. But definitely, as you said, I think all of these guards, you know, these young adults, they put in the hours of training. They're sitting several hours in the sun. They're alert. They're attentive. They're responsible. So, I mean, it makes my job as training them and overseeing them a lot easier when I have such a dedicated, wonderful staff. So they. The selectmen gave Miss Lee and the lifeguards each an official letter of acknowledgement for their quick response and outstanding work. We'd like to take this opportunity to commend you for an outstanding job as a lifeguard responding to a rescue on Tuesday, July 10, 2018, when a young woman experienced a seizure in the shallow end of Father McAleer's pool. You responded quickly and effectively and were able to remove the young lady from the pool. Your ability to remain calm in this situation is a testament to your dedication on duty and your concern you had for the life and the safety of the young woman at risk in the pool. The Board of Selectmen feel it is extremely important that the young citizens of the town of Norwood realize that their accomplishments are not only noted, but applauded by, the town, by town officials. Our young people are the future of Norwood, and we know that young people are su as, as such as yourself, as such as you, um, and the town is in good hands. Once again, with great admiration and pride, thank you. The Board also held a joint meeting between the Selectmen and the Permanent Building Construction Committee. The joint meeting was scheduled so that both boards could meet and discuss the current status of the Town Hall renovation project, as well as the status of the St. Gabriel Chapel renovations. Also Tuesday, during the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting, there were two hearings. 971 Providence Highway submitted a special permit application to put on an addition on their mobile gas station. The permit was unanimously approved. Members next heard from the Norwood Hospital, which submitted a special permit application for repair and installation of signage. One citizen voiced his concern about the signage being hung between light poles. Our viewpoint is, why do we have to have banners and so forth out of the hospital? You know, they changed their status from a non-profit to a profit. How about all the other profit companies in Norwood wanting to do the same thing? I go throughout Greater Boston generally. I have seen very, I have, as a matter of, I've never seen a banner on any other hospital. And it's bad enough that we put it on the building, but then we're going to hang it between the, the poles. The light poles. I, I think you're setting a, would be setting a very bad precedent. The board voted to keep the hearing open and continue at its next meeting on August 21st. The airport commission met on Wednesday afternoon. After hearing an AIP project update from Jeff Adler and the airport manager's report from Russ McGuire, members discussed requiring HB Holdings to acquire office space even though in the past they have waived this prerequisite. A motion was made and approved to extend their existing permit and inform them that they would need to acquire an office space on airport property. At the previous meeting, the decision was made to hold off approving Boston Executive Helicopters 2017 non-FBO commercial permit until a fueling plan was submitted for FY17. 
Members held off approving this in their FY19 FBO commercial application until the next meeting because the plan has still not been submitted. Members then decided to hold off approving SNC Realty's application to sublease lots 5, 6, and 7 until the September meeting. The Commission then went into executive session to discuss strategies for ongoing litigations. On Wednesday night, the Community Preservation Committee met at Town Hall to discuss several items on their agenda. The Committee continued to review and edit the needs assessment for the Town. Appendix 1 would contain the documents that we had attached and yep. sent to you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. initially. And that would include all the, yep. yeah, all the things that were. The CPC also deliberated the guidelines for project submissions and formed a Nord Day subcommittee. The subcommittee will be responsible for the planning, setup, and breakdown of the first ever community preservation booth at Nord Day. The Trails subcommittee also met on Wednesday. Members discussed the guidelines for evaluating trails and their website where they will be posting trails walks. They will also be creating a Facebook page where they can post for the community. In regards to funding, the committee discussed multiple ways to acquire the money to maintain trails around town, as many of them are not currently walkable. They looked over a trail map mock-up and are hoping to have a final draft for a future meeting. Members also discussed their ultimate goal, which is to have one long trail in Norwood. The subcommittee will meet again on August 22nd. The Permanent Building Construction Committee met on Thursday. Members heard from the OPM regarding the St. Gabriel's Chapel window restoration. Abatement began on Wednesday and appears to be going smoothly. A motion was made and unanimously approved to go with stained glass windows that fit more with the time period in which the church was built than clear glass. Members then entered executive session to go over DCM files that could not be made public. When they returned, the OPM presented two bidder evaluations from companies Shea and Crocker for the lantern restoration. Committee member Francis Hobcroft expressed his desire to choose the lowest bidder, Shea. My sense is this, this is very consistent with the the estimate we had expected in mm -hmm. $75,000. That's correct. And, and I think uh, as long as he's got this kind of reputation, I don't think we should screw around. Let's get on with it. And we've got to get it done when he stays. Yes. And you're right, the longer it sits in the garage, the worse it's going to get. Yeah, they've, they've, they've noticed some additional damage, I think, since the last time. I move that we accept the uh, John Shea proposal for this project. The motion was approved unanimously, and members moved on to discuss the town hall renovations with Selectman Chair Tom Maloney and Selectman Bill Plasco. Committee members tried to clarify the opinions they expressed at the Selectman meeting on Tuesday night. After discussion ended, the PBCC decided to appoint a single liaison to attend Selectman meetings to prevent confusion. To watch complete government coverage, tune into the NCM Government Channel or watch it on demand at norwoodcommunitymedia.org. Welcome back. Every summer, the high school athletic program funds a five-week summer conditioning program that is held at Nord High. The program is run by Marathon Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine and includes strength training and track and field drills. Let's take a look at the workouts and learn more from NHS trainer Jillian Glenister. So we're up on the field this morning for our strength and conditioning camp. Um, it runs four to five weeks. We start This year we started right after the July 4th week and we run through until August 10th so the kids get a little break before preseason starts. And the idea is to get them up here working out, work on their conditioning, their strength, their endurance. Um, we do some footwork, um, agility, and then we go down to the weight room and do some lifting so they can work on their power moves down there, build some strength um, while they're up here working on conditioning, um, building that endurance for the seasons to come. When they're still in school, we do a testing day called the Functional Movement Screen. So the FMS for short is seven movements, and we're looking at key movement patterns um, that people have to do in order, the idea is that they can complete those movements to safely um, work out, lift, run, 
So it breaks down seven key movement patterns and there's a scale from zero to three. Zero, you get a zero if you have pain with a movement. Three would be perfect, so you absolutely nail it. Um, and the idea is that we run all the kids through that who come up to our strength and conditioning program and that's what helps us build um, our program for the summer. So we take the results of all of those and see where the weakest areas are and the strongest areas are and it helps us build what we want to do in the weight room, what we want to do on the field and what we want to focus on uh, to help the kids get better and in the end prevent injury during the school year. I'm doing this because it will help during preseason and getting conditioned for all of the running we're gonna do during tryouts and coming here like as like more of an upperclassman I hope it'll like set an example for like the underclassmen to just like show that like it'll, all it's gonna do is help you and like just going out and like conditioning during the summer like it shows the coaches that you're like ready to like start going during the season and that you're already ready. I signed up for this program because I want to get in better shape, get stronger, and become more flexible and just get ready for the season, prevent an injury, getting ready for all the sports seasons. Uh, we do a lot. We do a lot of running here, and that gets that gets all of us in shape. And then we do lifting in the weight room, which gets us all a lot stronger. So over the course of the five weeks, we build um, in what we do. So we start off with just one lap as a warm up. Then we go into our warm up, uh, our warm up on the field, and that warm up on the field stays the same for the, all five weeks. We just gradually build on what we do. So they come up, they get their warm up lap in, they head over to the goal line, and they know they're ready to start. There's three rules that we have when we the kids start up here: show up on time, work hard, get better. Fourth rule: have fun. We promise them that if they do show up on time, work hard, have fun, they will get better. And we really see improvements. We see the kids love it. Norwood High is really lucky. The kids don't have to pay for this program. It is fully covered by the athletic department, which is huge. Other schools in the area that we run it with, kids pay out of pocket. Um, and we felt really strongly that in order to get the numbers that we want and the turnout that would benefit these kids, that we wanted it covered. And we are really fortunate to have our athletic department cover it for the kids this year. So they don't have to pay for it, which is awesome. Thanks Jillian. It's good to see the athletes working hard over the summer as they prepare to compete in the Tri-Valley League. Norwood Community Media just wrapped up the fifth and final week of the Lights Camera Summer Workshop. The 17 kids in this week's class worked hard and learned everything it takes to produce a news broadcast. They even went out into the field to shoot their own stories. Let's learn more about the new statue in front of Town Hall. Hi, I'm Sindhu and I'm in front of the statue in downtown Norwood and we're going to find a little bit more of how it got here. Recently, there was a new addition to Norwood Town Hall. Well, the statue behind me is dedicated to John Carroll. John was the town manager here for 39 years. Mr. John Carroll was a well-known icon around the town of Norwood. Mr. Carroll was the town manager. He was hired in November of 1978, and he served until this past December in 2017. The statue perfectly portrays who John Carroll was at heart. The statue represents kids. Uh, Mr. Carroll had a large family. He had 18 kids, and he loved kids, obviously. And he also loved outdoor art. Overall, this beautiful statue is said to mean a lot for the town. It adds a touch of class to the community. Um, we'd like to see more outdoor art. Reporting for LCS, I'm Sindhu Kohli. Great job, Sindhu Kohli. Norwood Day is just around the corner. Each September, residents can look forward to fireworks, street vendors, popular games, live music and performances, and more. We can thank the Recreation Department for sponsoring this annual weekend that is so special to the town. For more on how you can get involved and volunteer this year, here's Rec Department Supervisor Travis Farley with the latest. The Recreation Department is actually looking for volunteers on Friday, September 7th for the fireworks at Coakley Middle School from 6.30 until dusk when fireworks are end, when they end. So if, uh, if you're interested in helping out on Friday night, um, you'll just be checking buttons, um, selling buttons, making sure everybody's having fun, and just a, a fun atmosphere to volunteer in. And then Norwood Day itself will be uh, Saturday, September 8th. So if you're looking to, to volunteer for a few hours or just help us sell buttons on Saturday, um, working at different entertain entertainment venues, just checking buttons. Um, if you're looking for, if you're a senior at Norwood High School and you're looking for a few hours for uh, your for your senior for your senior project, or if you're a senior looking for a few hours for the tax write-off program, uh, please let us know. Thanks, Travis. If you are interested in helping out, please contact the Civic Center. Just a reminder to Nord residents that there will be a few road closures in the next few weeks. 
Washington Street paving from Hoyle Street to Fairview Road will begin at 5 a.m. on Tuesday, August 14th, so please seek an alternate route that day. And Guile Street will be closed from Broadway to Lenox Street Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. during the weeks of August 13th and 20th. This will allow for the safe demolition of the old Plimpton Press Building. Please seek alternate routes as well. Well, that's all for NOAA News. To stay up to date with NOAA Community Media, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. As always, thanks so much for watching. Have a great weekend.